welcome back to the Star Wars Library. So today we're going to finish a series. We're talking about the final uh, comic book in the Dark Empire series. This is called Empire Zen, and it came out in 1995, and it's by Tom Veach. And uh, uh, this is the, like I said, the final uh, of the Dark Empire. Now, it's a little bit different here because, as you might recall from the previous two Dark Empire series, those were all six issue mini series. Um, each one had their six issues, and it was Tom Beach and Cam Kennedy doing the writing and then the art. So this one's a little bit different because this one is only two issues. And uh, the reason for that is because there was some beef between Tom Beach and Lucasfilm. Um, there was a lot of stuff with um, some Tales of the Jedi where they were wanting to do some things with his characters and they claimed he didn't own the character or would get any royalties or it's a whole different thing and I don't want to get too much into detail of that here because that in and itself could I feel like could be its own video or whatever so just know that there was a lot of beef so they would butt heads and eventually Tom Beach would leave and he would not write for Star Wars ever again and so the result are two issues and it's an okay conclusion to the story that he had been crafting since Dark Empire, but it's, I don't know, it feels really rushed <laughs> in comparison to the others. So let's go ahead and dive into it. Like I said, it's two issues. This is issue one. And uh, the last issue, issue two. So much, much shorter. And in this case, uh, it's a little bit easier to find, I feel like. Now, the other thing that's worth mentioning about this series is that Cam Kennedy had done the art for the previous two. Um, this was done by a new writer, or artist, pardon me. This was done by Jim Bikey? Bikey? I apologize for butchering the name. Uh, the um, Dave Dorman, of course, still did the amazing covers. But uh, the thing is, is with this is that with the art um, that uh, that's here, it has some elements that are similar to um, to Cam Kennedy, but uh, with some of the coloring. But it's much more uh, a little bit more more uh, akin to more uh, modern comic books or or comic book or what would be considered the norm. You know, for the longest time, as a side note, I'd never really been a huge fan of the artwork for Dark Empire for that series. But then I had heard someone uh, raise the, the point of, do you not like the way that it's drawn or do you not like the way that it's colored? And they had a point. Um, and, uh, and so it was, it was a little strange, but once getting used to that, I really enjoyed for how unique it was. This is still pretty good. Uh, in these, but it's definitely clear that they're trying to emulate the Camp Kennedy style. But um, but but even then, with their color choices, I don't I don't know why. If they really wanted to go full Camp Kennedy, they should have went the you know the overall coloring with the greens, the pinks, the blues on the entire page kind of thing. So I don't know. I don't hate it, but it's definitely different from the other two. So let's go ahead and talk about the story here. So the story of, um, of uh, Empire's End, or Dark Empire 3, is uh, Palpatine's clone body is failing. All of his clone bodies are failing. Uh, none of them are working anymore. They're all decaying, basically. They're not, nothing that he can do with this whole cloning thing is going to last forever, which is what he wants. Um, they're all decaying, and they're just not going to, they're not going to make it. So if there's no place for his, you know, this essence of his spirit to go, he's kind of screwed. And so Sidious comes up with this idea. He, he consults with these Sith spirits, and um, he learns that the only suitable body for him uh, is Han and Leia's youngest newborn son named Anakin. And so that's his new, that's his new plan. Palpatine's like, all right, I got to take over Anakin Solo's body. So basically, this whole thing is them trying to um, to keep poor Anakin Solo away from Sidious. So Sidious and uh, company will catch up to our heroes, 
and he's force lightning everybody. He's doing all that, and um, and uh, he uh, Sidious reaches, as you can see right here, he reaches for Leia, holding uh, New Anakin, and he's like, you know, ah, I'm gonna get you. Han is actually the one who pulls the trigger, and shoots Pal. And so basically, um, and like I said, you know, the, the, the meat of it is an issue too. So, so Han does that. The essence that possessed these clone bodies of Sidious is now flying to take on Anakin. But uh, Impeto Jeos Brad, I can't, I'm never going to, I feel like I'm never going to pronounce his name correctly. Anyways, he, he's the ball Jedi, the floating ball Jedi. Uh, he is mortally wounded in the fight uh, with Palpatine. And so in this last uh, thing, because he knows he's going to die, he throws himself uh, in front of the spirit and intercepts it and basically prevents Sidious from uh, getting to young Anakin. Uh, and then he dies and basically brings Sidious down too. Now that this essence is gone, Sidious is tr one in you know, truly dead. Um, so that's kind of it. I mean, like I said, it is... It is two issues coming from the previous two parts, which each had six issues. It's two issues. Um, it feels like the first one is kind of like, ooh, it's rushed. And this one even feels more rushed because, again, you're, you're taking a story that should have been and you're trying to get just two issues out of it. So it's kind of unfortunate. Um, it, it feels a little anticlimactic. But, again, you know, when you understand the behind the scenes of it, it's just a blessing we got this at all. You know, because I'd rather a conclusion than no conclusion. So, very thankful for that. I wish Tom Veach and Lucasfilm could have worked out their differences. I think Tom Veach was an incredible writer. Uh, he had an amazing ideas. Um, his his Tales of the Jedi is some of my favorite uh, comics. And I love the Dark Empire stuff, too. So, uh, Tom Veach is just an incredible, uh, you know, he was an, he was an incredible writer. And definitely going to miss him and his contributions. So I wish they could have done that. I wish they could have worked it out. But... I'm happy with what he gave us. And like I said, this is pretty good. Uh, so, is Empire's End, is this an essential read for your Expanded Universe reading? Uh, yeah. I mean, I, I would say that this that this series most definitely is, especially if you've been reading Dark Empire 1 and 2. It's really imperative that you read this. Um, you know, and, and even if you're not reading Dark Empire, this might be worth your time to check out. Just because, too, it's going to give you a... Uh, more of a conclusion. I mean, you'll you'll know that it concluded if you read, you know, some of the other EU stuff. But when Dark Empire is mentioned, you're going to know specifically how it ends because of Empire's End. So I think it's good. Like I said, it's definitely not the best of the three, and it does have its flaws. But for what it is, it is pretty good. Just wish it could have been a bit more. But like I said, for what it is, I'm very happy with it. So. Anyways, my friends, thank you so much for checking this out.